Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ number 56, the knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, hot button issue. Amongst other things, we're talking about the Chris Reeves Sabenza and if it's worth the money. So, let's get into it. Ta-da! All right, before we jump into the uh, the topics for today, just want to say, as always, if you want a chance to have one of your questions featured in this series, you just have to leave them in the comments section below, and we'll go through and pick out uh, pick out the ones we think are going to be fun to talk about, and possibly feature them in a future episode. So, first one for today comes from Zach McAllister. Uh, hey, DCA, really enjoy your content and your opinion. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm ready to step up and see what the expensive side of the market has to offer. I've already got a pair of three, Giant Mouse Ace Biblio, Artisan Cutlery Tradition in Titanium, and a couple other knives in that price range that I love, but I've decided to step it up. I want either the Chris Reeve Large Sabenza or the ZT Hinderer in full titanium. I think you're talking about the, the 562. Uh, is the Sabenza worth the sacrifice in blade steel and extra cost? since the ZT has 20 CV. Um, I think in terms of the, you know, talking about a sacrifice versus from the uh, S45 VN that the, uh, the Sabenzas are now coming with versus the 20 CV. In my mind, having used plenty of knives with both, it's not really a sacrifice in any real appreciable way. Um, before the internet gets up in arms, yes, 20 CV should theoretically hold an edge longer uh, while being a little more difficult to maintain than, you know, similarly made S45. What I'm getting at is in, in actual use, if you're actually going out and using these knives, the steel edge retention is one of the last things you're going to notice. The way you perceive these knives and the way you experience them is going to be much more heavily influenced by different factors. And these are actually two fairly different knives overall. Uh, we've got the ZT562Ti, full titanium handles. You can also get it with a carbon fiber front. Uh, that's about 300 bucks and you've got the Chris Reeve Sabenza 31. This one's mine here at the bottom. Uh, comes in about 450. Um, in terms of are they worth it? I did mention this Sabenza is mine. I did pay for this, so I think they're worth it um, because I spent my own money on it. But the differences between these two knives, like I said, they are pretty different. And that's nothing you're ever gonna really be able to tell just from photos on the internet. So that's why I'm here. I'm gonna kind of take you through the differences between these two guys. Uh, pick them both up and you'll immediately notice uh, a slight difference in weight. The Sabenza feels a little lighter and a little more agile in the hands, at least for me. Whereas the 562 feels a little bit more like a bruiser, even though blade length is very similar. The locking mechanism is the same. We've got titanium frame locks here. Different interface between the, uh, the lock bar and the steel itself, but again, not something you're really gonna notice in actual day-to-day -day use. As far as the feel of these knives, we've got a stonewashed finish on the ZT that is smooth, and we have a sandblasted or a bead blasted finish on the Sabenza. It's still smooth, but there's a hint of texture there. It's kind of a, you know, a matte texture versus like a glossy texture, that sort of thing. Different feel in the hand. If that's your, your thing, great. If not, go with the smoother handle on the ZT. Handle feel, a little bit different as well. Uh, again, the ZT feels a little chunkier because it is a little chunkier. It feels a little more like a bruiser. For me, however, I say the, uh, the flipper tab changes the feel of this knife a little bit when you compare it to the Sabenza, which, you know, in theme of the, uh, the neutral weight, it also has a slightly more neutral handle. Feels like you can get a few different types of grips a little more easily versus the, you know, the best grip that this knife really excels at, which is, you know, your standard saber grip like so. And it does feel very good in that type of hold. You know, besides cutting, the other thing you're gonna be doing most often with these knives is opening and closing them. And again, very different experiences with these. The Sabenza is a washer-based pivot. Uh, you don't have ball bearings. This is not like a flip, flippable knife, no flipper tab, obviously. They can be broken in and flicked open with your thumb with a little bit of, of uh, breaking in, like I mentioned. But the Sabenza is, you know, characteristically has a much more deliberate opening, whereas the ZT fires open with that flipper tab. 
feel-wise, and this is only directly in comparison with the Sebenza, the ZT feels a little bit looser, and that makes sense because it doesn't have those big wide uh, washers in the pivot. I'm not saying it feels loose in general, just in comparison with these two. Again, calm down comment section. Um, so, you know, the Sebenza has just a little bit more of that solid feel, even though it's lighter and a little bit thinner, it's certainly not a lightweight and, and non heavy usable knife. Uh, last thing, of course, you're going to be cutting with the blade. And here's where these two guys, you know, continue to really uh, set themselves apart. Uh, the Hinderer has a thicker blade and a flat grind. Hinderer's slicer grind, actually, where it's essentially steeper here, or uh, the angle itself is not as acute here at the back, and it gets more acute out towards the tip. So it's a little chunkier here at the back, a little more slicey here at the front. The Sebenza starts with thinner blade steel overall, and they give you a hollow grind as well. So right behind the edge, it is much thinner than the ZT. So for a lot of day-to-day -day tasks, when you, you know, combine all these elements together, the Chris Reeve might have you know, a little more efficient slicing. It might feel a little more cutty, so to speak. Whereas the ZT, again, leaning into that bruiser nature, if you're really pushing this through heavier tasks, hard work, that sort of thing, you might appreciate the extra strength in the blade and the extra strength of the grind. Again, you kind of have to evaluate your needs in particular. Um, Hope that helps really. Uh, last thing uh, I didn't mention is also the carry systems. You've got a deep carry clip on the ZT, which is reversible. You've got a non deep carry clip on the Chris Reeve, which is not reversible, but you do have a dual, essentially dual retention points. You've got a little dip in here, which puts pressure on, you know, your pants pocket in two places. And you've got a removable lanyard here, which, you know, a lot is going to be sticking up out of the box versus the ZT, but you can always take that lanyard off if you want. So very different experiences. Both of them, in my mind, very worth the money. I, I have no problem recommending either of these knives, but they are different. Take which one you like. And in this case, steel doesn't matter, <laughs> at least not as much as some of these other things. So hope that helps. Next question comes from Mislav Yakovac. Uh, hello, David. I have a huge problem. I literally sweat like a pig when I'm working out or running. Uh, even my cold steel Bush Ranger light got some rust spots while I was hiking and sweating. I'm very interested in D2 knives, but I feel I'm stuck with stainless steel knives. Should I consider a D2 knife since D2 is not stainless steel and because my budget is not huge for now, so I can't afford anything better? Cool. Um, that, uh, that, that's the thing with D2. It is a semi stainless steel. It's not completely stainless, but if you're, uh, you know, that, uh, the eight CR series stainless steel on that Bush Ranger is a stainless steel. Interestingly, it's not the most stainless steel out there. It, it can develop a little bit of spotting. Um, but I, I get your, I get your quandary because in the price range you're talking about pretty much nothing is going to hold an edge like D2. Uh, so if you want to try it out, what I'd do is I would go with a coated blade and not spend too much money. 32 bucks, the K-Bar Dozier in D2. You've got a coating on that blade, so it's going to help, you know, keep corrosion at bay. You only really, on this guy, would have to worry about it right there around the edge. And I think not even, a little bit around the, uh, the, the tang of the knife, as you can see there where it interfaces with the uh, lock bar itself. Just make sure to keep it oiled. And... Try that out, see if it works for you. It's a great knife overall. It's very neutral shape, three inch blade, plenty to hold onto even though it's a shorter blade and very lightweight. If you're talking about running and working out, it's not gonna weigh you down either. So check that guy out. And uh, if you like it, maybe experiment more with some, some uncoated stuff. But at least with this knife here, you can really enjoy that D2 edge retention for very little money indeed. All right, next question. Uh, we're talking about Sebenzas again. Adrian Chu, uh, seriously loving your videos. Thank you. Uh, I think it's the reason I'm getting interested in knives. I'm very sorry for that, sir. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> um, I just bought a Civivi Elementum, Elementum uh, which is my first ever non multi tool folding knife, and it's great. Um, easy to see why. I mean, the Elementum is becoming one of the de facto recommendations on a budget because it does everything really well. This is one of the new versions here with uh, Gaborsha wood handles, quite nice. Um, I have a question. Should I go and get a good high-end knife? I'm eyeing the Sebenza, 
or should I continue to experiment with multiple cheaper options? I don't foresee myself collecting knives, but just want something good that would last me a lifetime. Cheers. Um, I had a little bit of a, of a hard time with this one. Eh, I shouldn't say that, but it got me thinking that maybe you shouldn't buy a Sabenza just yet. Um, it depends on what kind of person you are, quite honestly. Um, again, are they worth it? I think so. I've bought, uh, bought a handful myself, but if you're the kind of person who, who, you know, you know what you like and you really appreciate things being high end and you know, you want, you just want the best, certainly a good choice and don't look back. Um, if you know, money's a little bit tighter and you know, you're, you're not quite sure what everything's out there and you're, you know, you're kind of just getting into the subject too. It might not be, it might be a little harder to appreciate, honestly, for those just getting into the hobby. Like if you don't know why it's good, you might not know why it's good. If that makes any sense. Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't think that I'm, I'm fully explaining my, my thoughts on this well enough, but I hope you guys get what I'm getting at. Honestly, for, for Adrian here, mess around with your Elementum for a while. If you just got it, it's certainly a good knife. It's may not last a lifetime, but it's certainly gonna last a number of years. And again, we talked about the differences between that ZT and uh, the Chris Reeve earlier in the way they open. And you're gonna have a very different experience here. If you really like the snappy action, the flippability of this, it's not something you're really gonna get with a Sabenza. Once you're really confident in, in knowing what you like, then look at a Sabenza, I would say. Keep messing around with some cool stuff here and, uh, and maybe we'll turn you into a knife collector yet. There's all kinds of stuff in between. There's all kinds of stuff in between too. That's, that's very true. Um, I mean, we've talked about like Sabenza alternatives and some other knife AQs. We'll make sure to leave a link to that as well. Might give you another, uh, another couple steps in the way. Um, don't not buy a Sabenza. Just don't buy it yet. Solid, con buy it eventually. solid consumer advice right there, I would say. Uh, next question comes from Pat. Um, and this is a question I've been saving for a while because I've been waiting for this particular knife to be released because it's the perfect answer. Um, unfortunately, I hope uh, the, the timeliness of me answering this is not as good now because as you're about to see, but sorry, Pat. Uh, hi, David. I am a sushi chef and I'm starting a new job where I will be able to ride my skateboard to work. Um, that sounds like a, like a fun anime character, like the skateboarding sushi chef. Well, it's already in the works. <laughs> Someone's out there doing it right now. Uh, I'm looking for a five to six inch double bevel knife that I can carry on my person. Uh, I'm not super particular on blade shape. I can use a chef's knife, paring knife, or yanagaba. Also potential sheath options would be a big plus. I've got in my mind, at least the perfect thing for that. New release from CJRB. This is the Silax. Uh, comes in about 70 bucks, five inch blade, just over that. And you can see very culinarily oriented uh, fixed blade here. Uh, looks a little bit like a small sushi knife, in fact. Uh, RPM9, it's a powder metallurgy steel. It is double beveled, as you can see. We've got G10 handles, a few different colors. I really just happen to like this, uh, the beige G10 here. I think it would work really well in a, a culinary setting as well, just in terms of the looks. It's nimble. It's going to cut really nicely. It's going to be a good, you know, daily utility, break down a lot of boxes with this, or you can use it as your small food prep knife. It's got a little bit of rock to it. If you get your knuckles out of the way, you could do a little mincing on a cutting board, even though it's not got a ton of drop to the edge. It's not the, it's not what I would reach for first, but it's going to do in a pinch. It's going to be able to pull out or uh, pull off some nice slices like a small sushi knife, essentially. Really, really cool. Quite honestly, uh, sheath it comes with is Kydex color matched. In this case, it does have a, uh, a lanyard here off the top. Um, not really going to be great for carrying on a belt, which you may or may not want to do that while you're riding your skateboard anyway. Um, you could rig something up, but you know, your standard tech locks, uh, large or small, aren't going to fit these hole patterns. So you have to come up with something a little bit different. This guy all the way great for, you know, taking to your job, great for throwing in a bag. If you're going on vacation, especially if you're going to like a, a rental home or something like that, cause they never have good kitchen knives there, road trips, that sort of thing. You'll always be, be able to have a good culinarily inclined blade.
All right, now we come to the lightning round for today. First question is from Luca Kajfes. 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 Words are hard. You don't. You don't see how this is spelled yet. You'll see later when you're putting the edit together. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, hi, DCA. I'm getting married in the June of 2022. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. Uh, and I want to buy a knife for my wife to be. She's not a knife person, but a few years ago I bought her a Victorinox Classic and she loves it. I'm looking for a smaller dedicated knife, but bigger than the Victorinox. And I want to have a, a, a place on the blade or handle for engraving. It can be a folder or fixed blade, uh, but if it's a fixed blade, I would like it to have a leather sheath. Thanks. Um, stay away from the fixed blade, especially if she's not a knife person, I would say. Spyderco Dragonfly in the all stainless steel body, 82 bucks, VG10 blade. You've got plenty of space here, either on the blade or on the handle, especially to do some engraving with it. It's a nice small knife and it's really good in that it's small enough to fit in ladies' pockets as well. And just a really nice utilitarian piece that she'll get, be sure to get some really good usage out of. That guy all the way. All right, next question comes from Eddie Daly. Best knives for pumpkin carving. Uh, that would be, in my mind, the Messermeister Pumpkin Meister set, which we sell right here. Uh, somewhere between 18 and 20 bucks. It's not like a huge number of tools. Some have, there are some sets out there have a bunch, but these are just the tools that work. Uh, we actually did a video uh, you, you know, showing these in use. We'll make sure to leave a link to, link to those as well. Uh, but you got a nice pumpkin saw right here. Does a real good job uh, cutting through the skin of said gourds. You've got a small, uh, basically like a scorer. You can dig little troughs out of the surface. And you've got a nice big honking spoon to help you kind of gut the thing out. Uh, these things work really well and a heck of a lot safer than trying to use any kind of, you know, plain edge blade to cut through that thick skinned, tough pumpkin exterior. Definitely go with one of those. I love those. Next question in the lightning round from Matt Krisak. Uh, hey, DCA. Uh, he was replying uh, to when uh, Knife AQ where I combined or I compared the Shun Sora chef knife to the Miyabi Ko. He asks, uh, are either of those kitchen knives dishwasher friendly? If not, can you recommend a chef knife that's dishwasher safe, but still has a steel with a good edge retention? Um, no. Um, in fact, the more expensive your kitchen knives get, the less and less likely you'd ever want to get them anywhere near a dishwasher. Uh, reason being, the handles can get messed up and the edge itself is in real danger of getting dinged up as it moves around in there. So you can look for stuff that has like the NSF, the National uh, Sanitary Foundation, that logo on it. Or if you're really insisting on throwing something in the dishwasher, I'd say go with the cheapest good chef knife we have. Uh, Kai Luna. It's about 15 bucks. You've got 4116 stainless here. Honestly, the design is good. The construction's good. And if you're going to abuse it like that, at least it's only a $15 knife if it gets so bad that you really don't want to feel like resharpening it and bringing back that edge or if you ruin that handle. Please don't put your chef knives in the kitchen or in the dishwasher. It even says right here on the package, hand washing and drying are recommended. Do not cut frozen food. Do not use scouring pad, steel, or gritty cleansers. Store in the sheath or, sheath or knife block. Yes, it comes with a little, little scabbard as well, which is cool. Another great thing to take on trips if you need it. Um, so I really, really don't, can't ever recommend putting those in your kitchen or in your dishwasher. Uh, John West, uh, hi again, DCA. Can you overstrop your knife? Uh, I know it's off topic. No, it's not. Or a knife channel. Or a knife channel. Uh, but hoping you could answer that for me. Thanks. Um, so theoretically, if your your angle and pressure are always right, I guess theoretically you probably you know can't overstrop your knife. But because the leather on a strop is is flexible, it's not rigid. You've got some give to it. If you come in with too much pressure or at too high an angle, you can round over your edge. And the more you strop, the more likely you're going to be to make a mistake somewhere along the way. So. Don't over, yeah, I guess, so yeah, theoretically, no, but in practice, probably, yeah. You don't want to go too long, get it to where it's good, and move on. Which brings us to our most serious question of the day from Tij879. Um, he, he was uh, replying to when I was talking about the utility of scissors versus knives in certain scenarios. He says, don't believe the propaganda from the big scissor lobby. 
They're just trying to disarm us, and those people that cut pizza with scissors shouldn't be trusted. There's something deeply wrong with them. Um, as long as they're not putting pineapple on the pizza, they can use whatever they want to cut it. It's okay honest. to say no to pineapple on pizza. It is. Actually, the question that should be asked is, is a pizza an open-faced sandwich? Discuss. That is all the time, unfortunately, we have for this episode. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And again, if you want a chance to have one of your questions featured in a future episode, leave them below as well. If you want to get your hands on any of these guys, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program so that you can earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you buy one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time. Pizza needs meat. Agreed.